David Mazzuccelli released Asterius Polyp as a near-complete surprise in 2009. Mazzuccelli had retreated from work as an illustrator for DC Comics and started working on the brief independent sequential art anthology series Rubber Blanket. The spark for Asterius Polyp came when Mazzuccelli began work on his section of the fourth installment of Rubber Blanket, but found that the anthology format was too short for the idea that he had in mind. Halting his efforts for Rubber Blanket, he began work on Asterius Polyp, which ended up being a 344-page behemoth of creativity, illustration inspired by architecture drafts with a Greek influence, and a storyline that can only be appreciated if you pay attention to the artwork. Plot Summary On its surface, there isn't much to take in about the narrative of Asterius Polyp. The story's scope is rather limited compared to how engaging the visuals are on just about every page. The titular lead character is an accomplished paper architect who is consumed with theories and a dualistic worldview. He is both brash and extremely eloquent when communicating his ideas, so during his swinging single years he was the center of attention and a popular academic. This attitude causes problems when he falls in love with a reserved and underconfident sculptor named Hanna Sonnenschein, a name that roughly translates to Flower Sunshine. Asterius Polyp's name refers to both asteroids and half of the name of the Cyclops Polyphemus from the Odyssey. Much of Asterius's flashbacks involve their life together as a married couple, and clearly illustrates the personality clash that caused them to separate. The story begins with lightning striking Asterius's apartment, and he flees the city to drive to the furthest location he can get to with just his pocket cash. There he gets lodging in a car mechanic job through a local redneck type with a hippie wife. Asterius imparts several gifts upon the family as he flashes back to his own past. These flashback vignettes are narrated by the ghost of Asterius' stillborn twin brother named Ignazio. Asterius decides to leave after losing his eye in a bar fight, essentially becoming a cyclops, and the rest, as they say, are spoilers. Visuals. The one convention that makes the visuals in this novel instantly recognizable is the prevalent use of the print primary colors cyan, magenta, and yellow. Pretty much no black ink is used in the illustrations, with purple serving as the normal substitute. Each character is drawn in a distinctly different style, and when arguments break out or evaluations are occurring, characters take a distinct second look as well, such as Asterius being rendered sort of like a, the wireframe of an extruded 3D shape, or Hana's looser pinstroke construction beginning to disentangle. It's hard not to heap praise upon the design and the visual presentation of this work. Every element works to push toward one of the main ideas behind the characters, and they are never more apparent than they are with Asterius. His rigidness is often portrayed by the shape of his head constantly being the same shape, even in the few shots when he isn't shown in profile. And actually, profile shots of his head are most often used, uh, sometimes even when it wouldn't make sense anatomically, so this really adds to that effect. Uh, his head shape pops up throughout the story in silhouette to take further advantage of this visual conditioning that you get seeing his head rendered the same way so many times. Furthermore, each character has their own speech bubble type and font. I've seen this sort of visual convention to distinguish characters before, but I've actually never seen someone stick with it for an entire 344 plus page book. To add one more thing, Many of the landscape shots seen throughout the book help to foreshadow its ending, and I slapped myself when I didn't see it coming due to all of the clues I was given before. Themes. There's a number of themes that are recurrent through the book, many of which serve as some light flavoring for the main course. Many allegorical references, and this is what I'll stick to for this section, Many allegorical references are made to Greek tragedies in order to highlight Asterius' personal journey during his otherwise kind of eventful stay as an auto mechanic. The Odyssey and the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice are the most prevalent literary references, and the myth of Orpheus is the most explicit by far, and it too serves to foreshadow the climax. What's important to notice about all three of these stories, Odyssey, Myth of Orpheus, and Asterius Polyp, is that they are essentially all about the journey of the main character to reunite with his wife. Outside of how they are accentuated by the visuals, however, the narrative to Asterius Polyp is rather thin, 
Uh, a fair amount of time is spent on periphery characters, and I'm sure they could have been cut, especially to keep in spirit with the Greek theater, where the casts are normally very small. I originally thought of putting this novel in the special recommendations category because it's very useful to look at and read for academic purposes. On that note, I actually read through much of a great thesis on a serious polyp written by Christopher McCarthy, and that'll be linked below, and that helped me swallow all the material a little bit better, and I can really appreciate the totality of the work that's been done here, so that's why I decided to bump it up to top tier. Overall, Asterius Polyp is certainly a must-read for anyone who has an academic interest in graphic novels, or anyone like myself who aims to have a comprehensive knowledge of the medium. I would place it up there with Watchmen and Mouse as mainstays for study purposes, and it's nice that this one is a far more recent release. I would also like to thank YouTube user Gavin Smith for the review request and the recommendation.